How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly here. We're going to have Jim Barcelona of Miami Herald up in about a half an hour. Talking about all of the current news. Brian, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I read your article last night on the on the quake. Oh, the horrible earthquake. Well, it didn't sound so horrible in your article. It looked really horrible when I when I opened up my paper this morning. Yeah, I know. In fact, I got a bunch of emails from people that were in different parts of the country, and they go, "Yeah, our local news was showing um, the earthquake footage, and I kept seeing the same building like 15 times." I thought, "How about that?" Yeah. That's because it's the the one the building they had. Yes. Yeah. Well, what would you expect? They show they show your backyard and everything's fine. I kind of thought that they might, but it didn't happen. <laughs> All right. What do you think of Thunder? I thought the uh, opening match was pretty good. I thought the uh, um, main event was okay while well, it lasted, and like the rest of the show was just a show. It was like a bunch of matches that um, it just it's almost like. When when they used to have those matches where they go like a minute, we'd always complain, these things are too short, you know, these guys need to be given a little bit of time. Now it's like they're taking these guys that can't go ten minutes and putting them at that for ten minutes, and it just makes the show just drag on forever. Some of those matches just, they last forever. Uh, something about it, I, I think part of it, you know, we've talked about this for a long time, and it is going to change at some point, um, and that's the taping of the Nitro after the Thunder, because, I mean, that building was so empty. And, you know, once you had that empty building and, and the crowd's already been dead from the Nitro, and they weren't that live during Nitro anyway. And it's just, it was like I had it on, and it was like nothing was, just didn't sink in. Yeah. What can I say? I mean, I, wa- I watched just about the whole show, and it just didn't sink in. I mean, Sean, Sean Stasek and Johnny the Bull, they're out there. And I remember... Um, well, that, you know, that really didn't sink in. The taping, of course. <laughs> and your report here says, said to be boring. And I'm sitting here watching it about two minutes in. It's like, you know, this ain't that bad. And then it seemed like uh, 45 minutes later, this match was still going on. And I thought, really when that. the hell is this thing going to end? Yeah. What was that? I'm trying to remember what else was, uh, was on Hey, did Ken do that interview with the broom? Because I didn't see it. I missed it, too. Because I, I did something else. He, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it was on there. I was told that was, like, one of the best things on the show. I mean, right. not, I mean, as far as like right there. You know, somebody if did the canyon interview with a broom? Because what now? What was I doing? I came down. They must have gone up and written something. And came down and Scott Steiner was wrestling Booker T. Yeah, so, there was right before. Um, I don't know if it was right before Rick Steiner and Vito or right before Booker T and Scott Steiner, but they did a really uh, long video package for Ernest watched, Miller and Canyon, and it was okay, like it was just a video package. I mean, I fast forwarded. Okay, when, when they started the video package on Ernest Miller, I went upstairs. Okay, I yeah, I don't that. think they, um, I don't think they aired it. Someone can okay. call in, but um, yeah, just I let didn't us see know. It. Just let us know. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I, I guess Dick Buckus is going to replace uh, Jerry Lawler on the XFL broadcast on Saturday. Well, that was like a pretty minor role anyway. Yeah. I don't know who's going to replace him as far as uh, WWF goes. Uh, I, I don't think they've, they've made the decision yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Bobby Heenan and Larry Zabisco, as of a few hours ago, neither had been called. Um, I, know, I don't know what the chances are that, that they will be called. I just know that neither had been. Uh, let's see, what else? Maybe they're just going to try and work it out with Lawler first before they make any calls. They haven't done that. Um, no attempt whatsoever? Well, Jim Ross and Lawler talked last night, but it was very brief. And there was no attempt to work it out. It was just kind of like, geez, you know, kind of too bad it ended like this. You yeah. Know I mean, because they are actually friends. You know, I mean, they've been doing the broadcast together for years. And Lawler was actually very instrumental in getting Ross back uh, in, you know, after one of those firings. Yeah. Getting him back. You know, he kind of, like, told Vince, you know, like, after, I don't even know who was doing the announcing, but uh, somebody was doing the announcing and he did something all wrong. And Lawler said to Vince, you know who can do that, right? J.R. And uh, Vince goes, yeah, you're right, he could. And that was one of the reasons he got back on TV. You know what I thought was interesting about the whole... Uh, Probably Michael Cole, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I thought was interesting about the whole Jerry Lawler thing was about... Um, when we usually do the polls on the website, we usually average about 1,500 votes, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And I remember a couple of weeks ago I did uh, I did the one about guess big show's weight. And that thing was up there on the site for probably five days because I didn't do a new poll. And it got like 3,000 votes, and I thought... Wow, this is the biggest ever. 
And uh, yesterday I put up the poll about uh, what do you think about Lawler's departure from the WWF. 3,500 votes. Just killed yeah. every poll we've ever done. So well, it's a hot story. Well, yeah. that's, why I didn't do it. that's why I didn't do it on the, uh, on the Yada. <laughs> but, um, no, no, as far as Vincent and Lawler, they, they have not talked. Um, I'm trying to think what else, what else there is. You know, I mean, Lawler actually did a uh, commentary on uh, what's it, uh, kinglawler.com. It's actually pretty interesting. It's blow by blow. And as best I can tell from talking to several other people, everything is pretty much exact. Now, I, I hadn't heard all of those stories. I'd heard probably 75% of them. But of the 75% that I heard, they were exactly like almost word for word how he described them. So the credibility <clears throat> of it is pretty high. I um, the interesting thing about that story was he's talking about sitting down in the office with Vince, him and Oh, that Stacey. was the best stuff, huh? And he's like, you know, if you had a problem with her, uh, why didn't you tell her about this first? And Vince is just like, well, maybe I should have. <laughs> I, I did. It was like, you know so I said, he didn't even care. He came off so heartless, like, well, we didn't tell her, we probably should have, but it's over. That that meeting, by the way, took about a, a little bit less time than it took for you to read that past <laughs> about the meeting was how long. I mean, it was like a split second. But um, the thing that I thought was just hilarious, okay, was... Um, that, that Lawler goes to Ross, and of course Ross goes, it was Vince's decision, and then he goes to Vince, and Vince goes, wasn't that a talent relations decision, which of course made a Ross decision. Exactly. I thought that was, that was, um, very typical. Classic Vince, too. Reaching out, shake the hand. Jerry, I want to thank you for everything you've done for this company. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> no, no, bye. <laughs> that's how, that's how he is. I know. Every time you yeah. hear about someone get fired by Vince, same story. Thank you very much. Well, except, for, except, ex except for Bret Hart, but Bret Hart actually didn't get fired. And Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly. Damn. No, they didn't shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> no. They shook. Kevin, not, not, not just, just not so people aren't confused. It's Ke he meant Kevin Wackles, at, or who wrestled his nails, and not Kevin Kelly, who's on television right now. Um, they shook. Yeah, he shook him. <laughs> <laughs> shook him and started choking him. Probably turned him upside down by his feet and shook him to get all the change out of his pockets. <laughs> yeah, in a cartoon. Um, uh. Yeah. Got a message from uh, from from Vince's office today. Uh, actually, from Vince. It's from Vince, although it wasn't directly from Vince. And he go, it was basically about the Lawler thing. And it was like, you you should know that uh, Vince does not comment on people who are no longer working for this company. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to do it. Yeah, kind of, kind of funny. By the way, just there was someone who would ask this yesterday, and I checked on it. Uh, SummerSlam is still in San Jose, just so everyone knows. I wasn't, um, I mean, I had always heard that, and then someone asked, they thought maybe it had changed, and it has not changed. Um, I guess Rusty Tillman does not like this angle. Uh, let me read this. That's um, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. His, uh, this was in the New York Star Ledger. He goes, they're trying to manufacture something, and I'm not going to do it. I said all along, if it's like the WWF, people are not going to like it. Actually, actually, I think that's the problem to begin with. It wasn't enough like WWF. I'm not going to do it their way. That's not me. I don't want to turn around and have an insult contest on the field. My wife and children are watching. I'm not going to do it because I think it cheapens the game. Um, let's see. Uh, which else is there? There's something else. Um, that's, that's pretty much it on that. Uh, what other stuff do we got here? Got, this is the poll for yesterday. By the way, why don't you tell everyone about the, the poll results for Lawler, and I'll read this. Okay, it was, uh, what do you think about Jerry Lawler's departure from the WWF? It's a terrible blow to the company, 46.2%. It will hurt the WWF a little bit, 37.4%. So that's, and, like, that's, and, pretty, uh, that's a pretty big percentage. That's I like know. 80%. It won't hurt at all, 97 and I'm glad he's gone 6.6. .6. So uh, like 15% uh, didn't think it was going to mean anything, and the rest did. Yeah. This is, what do you think of the decision to release the women in WCW? Uh, it was a good decision, 23%. They should have kept two or three, 50%. They should have kept them all, 7%. And they should have dumped all of them but re-signed Tori Wilson, 20%. That 7% was every girl that was fired in Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the top candidate for match of the year starting in December? Uh, this is for the today's poll question. A, Kawada and Fuchi against Izuka and Nagata, which is actually the best one, but no one's seen it. Uh, B, the Hell in the Cell match. C, Benoit Jericho, which is the latter match from, from the January pay-per-view from Rumble. D, Helmsley and Austin from last week. And then E, Kawada and Sasaki from the Tokyo Dome. I was thinking of putting Rock and Angle in there, but 
I thought about Rocket Angle and Kawada Sasaki, and I thought Kawada Sasaki was slightly better match, so, so it's there. Uh, let's see, what is, what, what else? Yes. Uh, what else? Uh, the Superstars of Wrestling Tour, scheduled for, for, I think next week in Australia, has been postponed until June, because, uh, Jim Helwig has had a problem with his passport, and he couldn't get to Australia before June. <laughs> ah, God. What could that problem be? Yeah, probably doesn't have one. I don't know. I'm just thinking since he he um somebody changed his name to Warrior or whatever. Oh, I can just see it. some goofball hold up like that. Like, how can your name be Warrior? I need a birth certificate. <laughs> oh boy. I, I I don't know why any promoter would ever want to deal with Jim Helwig, especially now he hasn't even been on TV. You know, when was the last time Jim Helwig was on TV in something that actually meant something? WrestleMania six. Okay. No, 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 no. WrestleMania 12. You think he so? Came back. Oh, my God. I was at WrestleMania 12. That's the one with Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels' Iron Man match, right? It was the one, the one in 1996. Yeah, with right? him and Hunter. With him and Hunter in the one-minute match, right. Okay, I was at that one, and live in that building, he was ten times more over than Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart. I mean, it was scary going... I saw the line, you know, because we got there hours early. And all these people are like, ultimate, every, every poster was Ultimate Warrior. Everyone was screaming about the Warrior. They didn't care about Bret Hart. You know, I, I flew down to see Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels do a 60 minute match, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in line, they just wanted to see the Ultimate Warrior. It was like scary. You know, so he meant something then, and I think he meant something for about a month after that. By the time, you know, he was gone, eh, when he left, oh God, he was so horrible when he was there, but, he did mean a little bit... When did he feud was... with Papa Shango? When was that? Oh, God, that's like 91. Uh, okay. Right? No, no, 92. That's 92 because that was when the business fell apart. Ultimate Man, Warrior, Papa how Shango can that feud. be? Ultimate Warrior, Papa Shango feud coincided with the um, the aftermath of Hulk Hogan leaving and uh, the steroid problems and all that. That was like late 92, after WrestleMania 92, and that's when the whole thing like just fell off, you know, like the the earth is flat, and they walked one step too far, and they went straight down for about three years. When Papa Shango put that voodoo curse on the warrior, and he threw up green slime, I said, "That's money." <laughs> no, you didn't. You're right. <laughs> I said, "That's." You know what I thought was hilarious was when um, in Roller Jam they did that exact same angle, and I was thinking like, this was like the angle that killed the WWF for like years. Not, not that it did it all by itself. It was among there were many things that did, but it was. It was certainly one of them that didn't help the WWF at all. I'm going like, you know what, 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 what's really bad? Actually, it's one of my pet peeves. When it comes to wrestling, you know, everyone copies everyone, okay? So that's cool. But, you know, if someone has, like, a really terrible idea, like, everyone's going to copy it just because it's been done. Yeah. You know, they don't, like... like Without it's, even it's looking only... to see what, it, what actually resulted after this angle. Right, right. Look, like, XPW, you know what they, what they did in the main event last week, right? Last week, over the weekend, Saturday night? Well, was that a Vic Grimes and, uh... I don't remember who was in it because, but it was they did the one finger touch Hogan Nash. Oh yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. With the title change, and I'm thinking like, okay, let's see now. It hasn't been that long since that happened, and we all know. I mean, boy, that just drew so much heat. I mean, it's like it's like it's like I'm thinking like the same thing that like Nash and Hogan. Oh, think of all the heat, you know. Uh, you know, Nash is going to lay down, and I'm going to get the world title. There's so much heat, and it's like, why don't you look at what happened to that company? From that point forward, not that that was like, again, like the green slime, that was not the only reason, but it didn't help. Yeah. It was not a positive. So let's, yeah. let's copy an, let's, let's all go out there and, and copy WCW angles. That's just great. Um, anyway. It'll always any happen. Get, yeah, I know. Any other news to get to? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. As far as his temporary commentary substitute, what about Edge? Actually, you know who I would like? It's Christian. I think Rob Bartlett. Good. People suggested that one. He was horrible. Don't even ask why I thought of that name today. It just popped into my mind. He was uh, one of the original announcers for the original Monday Night Raw. They mm -hmm. brought in a stand-up comic with the idea that he was going to be really funny, but he wasn't. Kind of like I mean, uh, Monday Night Football. Uh, yeah, very much like Monday Night Football. They were ahead of their times. But you don't watch Monday Night Football. In a bad way. Yeah. Uh, let's see, this is from Joe. It says, no matter who the WF puts in the place of Jerry Lawler as the color commentator, it's going to be a step down. Taz and Michael Cole would be okay for Raw and SmackDown, but what about WrestleMania? Do you think that announcing team can do WrestleMania? 
or will be Jim Ross and Vince McMahon. See, the problem with Vince McMahon is he's so much of a character, I don't think that he can go out there for three hours anymore, or four yeah. hours. Because he'd have to be in character, and it's just, it wouldn't be right. Plus, Vince needs to... Vince really should be backstage. You know, it really is better for, ben, for Vince to be backstage than to be doing the announcing. I mean, I guess if he has to. I mean, it's kind of like um, like this past Monday when they did Six Man. I was so amused by Ric Flair, but if he'd done that for two hours, I'd have gone totally crazy. I thought Ric Flair carried the first half of that Six Man. I mean, the second half was actually a good match. The first half, I was going like, you know, I think maybe it was because Cat was in a lot or something. I was going like, yeah, this isn't very good at all. Mm -hmm. But Ric Flair was at making it entertaining. This was uh, from Ryan Briggs, who goes, I was listening to an archive of when Vince Russo was on the show in December of 1999. Nothing much of note except the topic landed on Steve Regal, and Vince Russo said Steve Regal's work was good, but he was boring. Uh, I just found that funny. Uh, yeah, I, I would think that if you listen to those interviews, you'd find many things funny. Uh, let's see, more suggestions. Missy Hyatt, no way. Rusty Tillman, yeah, okay. Trish Stratus, oh God, could you imagine her talking for two hours? Uh, oh boy. Uh, Stephanie. Oh boy. They could bring Shane back, but I, he was, I don't know. See, Bruce Mitchell made the comment about two southern guys in Vince's booth. I don't think so. Since when has Memphis been considered northern? You know, that's actually true. Jerry Lawler is a southern guy, but nobody thinks of him as southern because he doesn't have the southern accent really strong, <clears throat> like, Ro like Ross would. Uh, this is from Josh Barnett. You know, Josh Barnett just had a hell of a fight Friday night. Uh, let's see. Uh, he goes, uh, Brian lives in Seattle. Why doesn't he come to the AMC and say hi? So... Tell him you should come to AMC Pancration shows. Actually, I went to one, but it was like a year and a half ago. Yeah, you saw him fight too. Yeah, I saw him fight. He was in the main event. Yeah. I just don't know uh, when those things are. Well, Josh, tell us when they are. Yes. Give us give us the upcoming dates, and I'll head out to one. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is Brian's uncle Wayne. Do you actually have an uncle Wayne? Yes, I do. Um, is his email address Chico's uncle Wayne? Yes. <laughs> Chico's uncle. Your uncle Chico's uncle. Okay, this Chico's is a real uncle. deal. Wow. He well, ask him if he thought er the earthquake was better than his match with Pistol Pete Cruz. Ah, uh, I enjoy the earthquake more, actually. <laughs> Significantly more now that I think uh, about it. What is the <laughs> what is the contract status of Jerry Lawler? Okay, I should just talk to him about this because um, the the story in the torch is not untrue, uh, but. He did have a contract. What it is is, is that, because um, I was confused because I had talked with him yesterday, and he had mentioned something about, um, you know, when he got his release from his contract, and he was talking about his contract. And then I read the thing in the torch that he didn't have a contract, or that he'd had a signed contract but never signed it. And I was going like... Maybe to one age. <laughs> so, so I was... Oh, God. So I was, like, going like... You know, but the story was so detailed, you know, and like, you know, he has the contract, hasn't signed it, and he goes, you know, that's pretty detailed. Um, so anyway, I asked, and the deal is, is that he had a contract, they were writing up a new contract, and it was a new contract he hasn't signed, so that's true, but the old contract that is still in effect and hasn't run out. So he is under contract, but that, so that's the story. Do you know till when? What? Do you know till when? It doesn't matter, because he said that Vince is going to give him a release anyway. Okay. So he's, he told me it was a moot point as far as when it runs out, because he's getting he's expecting his release any day now. <clears throat> uh, let's see. It's from Stephen Cole. Who goes, you guys always talk about WF and WCW making up outrageous numbers on attendances, like one million people at Road Wild. Uh, the other, what about Iadas claiming that they are celebrating 35 years on the net? Tell me that's not a bogus number. Uh, that is meant for comedy, obviously. <laughs> that hasn't been around for 35. It's meant to make you laugh. Unlike that one million where they were trying to sell as a real number. Uh, let's Remember see. that Bash at the Beach where they said there was like 500,000 people or something? They said 100,000. Like didn't they say 100,000? Didn't they say 100,000? Something ridiculous. I think there was probably about 10,000 there. I'm saying there's not even 500,000 people in this whole county, much less here on the there, beach. Yeah, there weren't 100,000 people on that whole beach, and let alone watching wrestling that day. 
Um, and then they would show the overhead. You know what's so bad is they would show the overheads, you know, at World Wild and at Bash at the Beach. And you can see, you know, you can pretty much find the overhead, kind of have an idea how many people are there. Or at least like a quarter of a million aren't there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or 100,000. It's like 100,000 people. At the, I mean, oh, God. Yeah, they, you know what else was stupid was, uh, I couldn't even believe they did this on the pay-per-view Sunday. They got this barbed wire board or whatever, and they zoom in for a close-up, and I go, that's not barbed wire. That's plastic. <laughs> Why the hell would they zoom in on that? I don't know. In your opinion, this is a loaded question, who was the greatest WWF wrestler of all time? I guess it means, what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? The greatest? Does that mean strictly WWF? Does that mean was in the WWF for one day? Real wrestler? What does that mean? Um, Rick Flair was there. Draw. Box office draw? Well, for a career, you know, I'd say Ric Flair for a career, but not for his WWF career. Although he was pretty good during that period. Um, the most outstanding on his best days would probably be Shawn Michaels and Randy Savage. But Shawn was more consistent than Savage. But, I mean, I saw Randy Savage do four-star matches with the Ultimate Warrior. And that is a, a task. Yes, and that, that is. an amazing task. Um... I saw Shawn Michaels do a two and a half star match once with King Kong Bundy, which was almost as impressive. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What else? Ricky Steamboat was tremendous. Yeah. Uh, Bret Hart. Um, if that's if, if you're looking for you know pure, you know, dynamite kid, I guess in, in some ways for being ahead of his time. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Just what what do you think the chances are of Bobby Heenan? You know, he hasn't been called, that's all I could say. You know, the name has been mentioned. Um, and Vince wants him, you know. It's, it's Vince's decision. I, I can't read his mind. I, I tried, but it didn't work. Because when I tried to read his mind, I, could, I kept thinking, why do you get rid of Lawler? <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, let's see. Yesterday, uh, what do you got? William Regal. Hey, he's funny as hell. He'd be good. Yeah, maybe. I would hate to see him wasted with that, though. Yeah. Uh, how much paper do you go through each day? I don't know, but I go through those those, those reams of 500. I think I go through one of those, um, seems like about every two days. For, like, the faxes? Yeah, for the faxes and everything, yeah. Um, between faxes and, um, and, you know, printing out, you know, also printing out stuff, too. Yeah. Is there any truth to the rumor that on Raw, Vince will show up in a Las Vegas Outlaws jersey with a name on the back. He canceled me. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. It seems so bad in WCW where on Thunder, the two top faces, Booker T and DDP, run out of the ring. Uh, run out of the ring when they see five crummy heels run in. If the WF had the RTC or a bunch of crappy heels into attack Austin the Rock, uh, yeah, they would give them the stunners and rock bottoms like crazy. And they wonder why their faces don't get over. Yeah, it's true. Mind the, torch it. the Torch just reported that the fusion talks with Time Warner have broken off without a deal. Is there any truth to that story? Wow. Uh, I may make a phone call during the commercial break on that one. Um, I certainly have not heard that. Uh, let's see. Uh, on tonight's SmackDown, does Michael Cole call the action and Jim Ross do color or vice versa? I don't know for sure. I think Michael Cole calls the action and Ross does the color, though. Pretty sure. Uh, yesterday you talked about a goalkeeper blading in a match. Actually, people thought he bladed at first, but it came out that he used tomato sauce. Yeah, okay. It was the Chilean goalkeeper, and he ended up getting his country banned from competition for seven years. I was just thinking it would have been funny if he had used chili sauce. Yeah, that's pretty clever. Actually, I don't even think it was even a blade. It was just something sharp. I guess it's uh -huh. considered blading. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, that's right, because it wasn't a blade. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, can we attribute some of the King's departure to Vince's divided attention with the XFL backlash? He's really had little time to pay attention to the WWF. Lawler's retelling of the situation, work, shoot, little of both. I, I would tell you that, that uh, Lawler's story is, as best, as best I can tell, is, is totally a shoot. I mean, there's no, there were no inconsistencies in Lawler's story of the stories that I'd heard from several other people about what happened and his story. So I think that it's pretty darn real. And it appears Vince was making snap decisions because he didn't have time to think things over. Uh, then again, uh, he would have known what would have happened if he fi fired the king's wife. His attentions are that divided. It's no wonder the booking of the WF is so sketchy. Who knows? Maybe Vince wanted it this way. I don't know why. 
Let's see. Uh, Raw, uh, JR did mention Austin and Helmsley during the first segment, and also that Helmsley won the match, but they didn't push it any further because they didn't want to take the attention away from the Rock Austin segment, which is the focus of the show. And please tell Brian his newsletter rules. It rules. Oh, okay. um, Helmsley was uh, Helmsley was supposed to uh, be on SmackDown and do a run in the match that's the main event tonight, which is um, Austin and Angle. And for whatever reason, um, he didn't do it. Not, not, and there's no heat over it. It was just like that was the that was what was written, and as it was, you know, it was changed. So that's. Uh, let's see with Waller gone. What about Joey Styles? Don't know. What about Brian Alvarez? No. He's funny. He knows the business, and he's a good talker. Yeah. We can tell some stories. I'd get way too mad at Michael Cole. <laughs> <laughs> you probably... I know, because I'd be just watching him. I know, I'd be ready to kill him by about halfway through the show. <laughs> we got Jim Barcelona, the Miami Herald up. Jim, how you doing today? Hey, good. How you guys doing? We're doing pretty good. We're just uh, going over, about... going over who will take the spot on WWF TV. Right, of Jerry Lawrence. Do you know? I would say, you know what, I don't know, but I would. I was thinking uh, they could probably get someone like Dennis Miller to do the thing and then just kill the whole ratings altogether. <laughs> I really what about, Je- what about Jesse? Wait, no one's talking about Jesse. Oh, I man. can't go on a Monday, right? How controversial would that be if they got Jesse to do it, especially with all the stuff he's doing and how all these high up political figures who are so jealous of him want to just uh, say no you can't do anything that uh, you want to do in your own free time that would be fun that would be some good stories there too Jesse? what I'm worried about is it'll be a name that we've not mentioned like Jonathan Coachman no he's not ready no hugely depressing no no they need I mean come on look what Lawler yeah. brings to the table it'll be it'll be Taz I think see Taz is the one that right you see when Lawler is uh, off the camera I mean when he has to do his match or whatever they brought Taz in so and I guess they all like Taz's work from Sunday Night Heat, so it seems like he would be the next one that they're gonna they're gonna plug in that spot. Yeah, it's just too much of a drop off, though. I but do you think do you think that's a done deal with Lawler? You mean being gone? Yeah, nothing's a hundred percent. I mean, Vince. Could, but the, the problem is, is Vince not Vince is not really good at calling somebody up and going, Jerry, I made a hasty decision. I'm under a lot of pressure. Please come back. Yeah. You know, I mean, if Vince made that call right now, I would think Waller would come back sure. yeah, as well. You know, but, but, but Vince has to make that call, and Waller is not someone. You know, I mean, Waller's not going to call Vince up this week and go, you know, Vince, it's okay, you fired my wife, I changed my mind, I want to come back. I mean, like it may happen, in, in, it may happen down the road, but, but I don't think either of them is going to is going to make that call. All the temp- not anytime soon. All the tempers are high enough right now that neither one's going to budge, and and basically, bottom line is the fans are the ones that get killed in the whole situation. Well, you know, though, I think if Vince to... called and said, "Look, Jerry, I'm sorry. Um, I really want you back, but we can't take uh, Stacy back." I don't think Lawler would go back. Really? Not right now. Okay. All right. In in, in a couple of months, you might. Because depending then, on the situation, and depending on it all depends on the situation. You know, but. You wait a couple months, he's going to be on WCW TV. That's if they exactly. Wait, if, if they wait long enough, I mean, I can't imagine Eric not making that deal. No, Eric does that deal. That's the, one of the first things he gets done. If, if they're going to, if Lawler's not going to go back there, yeah. anything he gets done, if they get anything done. Shoot, that's true. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, and that's exactly one of the. Well, there's many problems with WCW, but that's one of the problems with WCW. You got to get somebody on there that. It, <laughs> They could deliver the show. They could talk. They could, you know, add some humor to the thing. And I mean, Lawler would be one of the perfect fit to do that, especially if they want to change the company around. I just think if uh, if they don't work it out, if Vince doesn't work it out, I mean, this isn't like Bobby the Brain Heenan leaving uh, WWF to WCW. I mean, it, this is someone that that's very still very hot as far as uh, commentators go. And it would, I think it would just be a very good, very strong addition to WCW, especially with the. With the commentators they have now, anyway. Yeah, but you know, Brian, think about this. Okay, you remember what you just said about Michael Cole? Mm-hmm. If you were sitting next to Michael Cole, think about Jerry Lawler sitting next to Tony Schiavone for four hours a week. <laughs> he's probably, he's going to give him a pile driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, that might be good. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That might no. Oh, these are bad. News, Actually, you're right. We don't even know what Bischoff's going to do with those commentators. He might get rid of Tony. Yeah, he, he might. might. Well, he might be like uh, Lawler and. Tanae? I don't know. I don't know. Who could Maybe Lawler we'll... work with there? Uh, could we be Lawler. In, uh, it could be Lawler and Joey Styles. 
Mm-hmm. See, that would be that would be interesting. See, I tune in and watch that. And that well, I should be, say this: I'll watch anyway. I'll tune in to listen to that. That would be actually. I, I like the chemistry of Waller and Joey Styles. I think it'd be okay. Yeah. Because I mean, um, Styles worked well with uh, Gertner. Yeah. And Gertner was, uh, you know, he had to do the. Uh, I guess they had to do the in-studio for the TV shows just to go over it a million times. Lawler doesn't need that. Hmm. Styles is pretty good as far as playing off a funny guy, too. He's yeah. a straight man. Straight yeah. man. You know, whereas Shivani, Shivani, the weakness with him is, you know, like when he would do the funny stuff, Shivani never really played along. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. I, uh, that's what I think. <laughs> really, I, I, really I, I agree with that. I think he just didn't get it. I mean, I don't, but Shivani's been there for so long. How, how This business, you know, how, how loyal it is, but still, how loyal... Would they be Nobody's someone like Shivani? <laughs> well, in this business, I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, just something, the old company, you know, the time, the the TBS company, um, was going to say, you know, he was just a fixture. Yeah. You know, and and um, but I don't think that Bischoff. I don't think there's any fixtures with Bischoff. I think that and, you know, and he wants a new look and a new everything. Sure. And he'll just build uh, this clean house. Um, I remember you were on. I saw you on. Was it Fox News Network with Bob Peters? Oh, no, was that the right? show? Yeah, I think you know what you're talking about. The show where they had the uh, the controversy about the wrestling and and you know what's the, with TV and if it's not good, if it's good, you know, affecting our kids, that type of thing. It was one of those yeah. shows or whatever that they had on. It was, was like I'm watching that. Pro, <laughs> pro was it? Pro one side against, one side for, that type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah, they did something like that. It's it's just interesting to me that the you know I, I love the fact that WWF is, it does this RTC bit. To sort of play off what the PTC has been doing and Brent well, Brent Bazell and what they're doing and all. I, just, I, don't, I don't know if it's a good idea to make your enemies mad when your enemies are effective. <laughs> <laughs> if Bozell was like ineffective, I guess you know what I mean. I would think that it would be a lot better. Than well, it would a lot sure. smarter. But I'll tell you what, Bozell. This is what I heard anyway. Who knows if what's true and what's not? But thing is, his uh, well, let's see. He does have Bozell does a, a column. He has a syndicated column, and uh, the people that actually are in charge of distributing that and all, they called up here asking, oh, would you be interested in doing an interview with Bozell? Sure, sure we would. And he's like saying, well, um, you know, we'll see what we can do here. We might want to set this up. He's very, this is the time Vince and them were suing him, or they put him in the long list of people that they wanted to get at. And he's like, you know, um, Brent's really shaken about all this. He's really upset by all this. And I'm like, really? I said, this guy, you know, he comes across like he could care less about anything. And he's then there saying, no, 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 he really shook, he's really just shook, he doesn't know what to do, doesn't know what's going on. To me, it didn't seem like he was shaking up about the whole thing, but that's what, that's what his people were claiming, who knows, who knows. I think you know what, too good. No, <laughs> nobody likes, nobody likes getting sued by Jerry McDivitt. It's just not, I mean, it's, there's no, there is no positive, you know, and it's like I probably have come close on a couple of occasions. <laughs> and, no, I mean, there's, it's like, you know, like, it's like, you know, at, and, and at the time, at the time, I was kind of like, you know, this is cool. You know what I mean? Let's just go wall to wall. You know what? Cool. Like, let, let, let me go head to head with the WWF legal team. <laughs> this is like, and I was thinking back, and I was, that was such a stupid attitude. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's no fun, and there's no upside to this at all. That's this. It's like that's a stupid attitude. And you know, he was kind of publicly trying to do that too. You know, like, you know, I don't care if they sue. And I'm just thinking, like, believe me, you don't want to be sued. You know, by Jerry McDivitt. He's no. like a, He's like a pit bull terrier. I mean, he's like... <laughs> we've got a guy down here. We've got a guy down here. He's a young guy, and he's a promoter, Bobby Rogers. I know Bobby Rogers. How many times? I mean, first there was the thing where... Uh, the finger! <laughs> Bobby Rogers is going to cut off his finger for a payoff. So there you go. He, how about how about selling his kidney on eBay? And oh, that's right. He was the that's kidney right. on eBay yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. It's big, bad, big bad Bobby. Bobby's cool. I like Bobby. We talk with him. Why he does the show down know, here? When that, story, when that story first came out, we should have known it was like an independent wrestler. <laughs> that, so Bob, and I'll look, cut it out myself in a match. Look, <laughs> look, so Bobby goes up against WWF several years ago. He he has the uh, WWF, at, which there was none at the time, but light heavyweight championship. Looked really good. He goes on, uh, oh, what show was it? One of these Jerry Springer type the Rolanda, that was the name of the show, as the WWF light heavyweight champion who was a bisexual crack addict. I and mean, they, 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 they built him as that. They built they didn't even do any checking. WWF was what they're sending McDivin and his team sending him letters. If you ever do this again, we're going after you better stop doing this. We don't want you to do this. And Bobby's like, hey, go ahead, sue me. What do I have to lose? <laughs> now Unless recently you Recently, if you have no money, it's a lot easier. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no this, but this now, round two, round two, that was several years ago. 
the, something about, no, I, I don't know all this technical stuff, but the domain names, the domain names. Bobby bought, like, the, the domain name for The Rock, for The Undertaker, for Stone Cold. Somebody even sent him a letter, you better give these up. But we're going to sue you. Bobby's like, go ahead. He goes, look, I already got a list of what I want to do with these uh, names on the website. <laughs> so now Bobby's doing, he's in the battle there. He, he's always doing something. Always doing, hey, they know him. I'll say that. They, WWF does know Bobby Rogers. <laughs> yeah, they know him, but. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> oh, but I guess Bobby's one that doesn't mind going against up, up against McDivitt and his crew. <laughs> uh, the deal's not dead with the fusion. Just checked. Uh, this minute during commercial break. I don't know any more other than that story. I mean, there may be there may be more to the story than than. I mean, it was just like, is the deal done? No, it's still on. So, just want to clear that up. Uh, let's. We'll start with uh, with Lou in Florida. Lou, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, All Jim. right. Hey, Jim. Um, just wanted to say hello. I'm a reader of the Miami Herald. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours. Hey, one one of two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to ask you what your thoughts were of the uh, South Florida independent wrestling scene, and if you could um, possibly foresee either WCW or uh, WWF making um, one of our local promotions, be it FOW, FCW, a developmental deal in the future. I, I you know, I don't know. We see the, the I, I think the business, you know, I, I'm not saying anything new is, is on a little bit of a decline if you look at the numbers, or the ratings anyway, stuff like that right now. I don't know if there would be any interest. And any of the groups picking up uh, a feeder group like that right now, I believe both companies still have their feeder groups going. Um, I think it would be great if they did. I know that uh, all the, what I find interesting in Florida, I don't know how it is in other states, that a lot of the talent down here, it's. Uh, I'm glad the promoters don't lock them out, even though they don't really pay them that much money. I know some promoters get upset if, like, you're going to work for another promotion. And down here it's nice because you see some of the same talent on different shows, wrestling against different people and all. Uh, I think it's a very strong area. The one guy that comes to mind is Billy Fives, who's uh, a, a great young talent down here. And uh, you know, whether they do a feeder program or not, I don't think so right now, which they would. But uh, I think still the guys are going to get a look and a see. I mean, John Tenta, the earthquake, I guess, opened his own school up, as so many do, or some do anyway. And he's up in the middle of the state. And they're supposed to have a big show on the 23rd of March. I was reading this today. Um, actually talking a little bit with Prince Ikea, who's coming down to South Florida for a show uh, this Saturday. And he was saying that on the show, and I read this too, that they were going to have uh, Raina and Mark Merrow. Mark Merrow was supposed to wrestle. And uh, Typhoon, who's, I guess, one of Tenta's former partners when they did the natural disasters at WWF. But the big name was Scott Hall supposed to be on the show yeah, competing. Right. So it, you know, it'll be interesting if, that, you know, if those, everybody does show up. But I just think there's a lot of talent in Florida. There are a lot of wrestlers, former wrestlers, current wrestlers that live in Florida, and it, it's a good area down here. Whether or not they're going to be a feeder program, I don't think so. I wish it would happen, but I don't think so. WCW actually got rid of uh, Wildside. Really? Yeah. I can't yeah, figure that one out. Oh. They, just, they, just, they just did it a couple days ago. Well, who's, uh, yeah, which, which, uh, which player, A, B, or C, made this decision? Which, <laughs> was this... Was this something I, from Bischoff's group? Was this something from Kevin Sullivan's group? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, maybe they switch they switch their affiliations with Dusty. Maybe. Really? Mm. Yeah. I, I, I just, just just speculation. I don't know. And, and that's that's wild. That is wild. But anyway. Also, Jim, you mentioned uh, Billy Fives. Um, and you work on how he's been doing with his WWF matches. I know he's worked some dark matches. But he worked out right. You know that he worked dark matches with WWF. Uh, did uh, at least three when they came down here during their uh, Florida trek. He was supposed to be competing in that big Super 8 tournament. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he yeah did. that was supposed, that was like a big coup for him yeah, yeah, to get invited to that. And that's, there have been a, a host of stars that have, uh, you know, gotten their break or at least uh, got a big good look at that event. And he was one of the ones selected to do that. Uh, I think he, to me, he's the uh, number one talent as far as local talent in Florida to uh, hopefully land in, in one of the big organizations. Uh, two quick things before I go. Um, to Dave, you think now that a Waller has been, um, from last I've heard, is available, that there'd be any chance of seeing him doing any independent dates? Oh, he wants to do independent dates. I, I was, you know, he wants to do autograph sessions, independence. Um, he said that he's stunned. He didn't realize how much uh, there is out there. I mean, his phone's been basically ringing off the hook ever since the word broke. So, yeah, he'll be doing independent dates and, and, and a lot um, of autograph signings. I'll send an email later, Dave, if you pop and have a contact number. That would be very interesting. Um, yeah. Also, um, as a final note, um, it would be really funny if Jim could uh, tell the story. I don't know if you know, Dave, Jim's a uh, former six-man heavyweight champion. 
yeah, Jim Barcelona, former FOW World Six Ten. Jim, look forward to seeing you next week on the tenth. Uh, have a great show. Thanks, guys. All right, Lou. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, that was wild. They did some gimmick where uh, one of their uh, they're at six man tag champs, and they had this little eight year old kid as uh, one of the tag champs. And uh, what happened was the guy they were going against, all of the partners he would choose, he would always lose. So he said, the heck with it. I'll just go it alone. And then they said, no, you have to pick two people. So he goes through the, he goes, you know what, I don't want to pick any in the back. I'll pick two guys from the crowd. And there I am on my laptop sitting in the back doing my thing. And he's like, well, how about you, newspaper boy? You think you're so smart? Why don't you get over here? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. He's like, come on, come on, be a man, be a man. I'm like, eh, all right, what the heck. So I went over there, stood by ringside. They picked some other guy out of the crowd. We stood there. He wrestled the whole match. He ends up winning the title on a fluke. We win the belts, and then they retire the belts, thank God. So I didn't have to go through any tables, so that made it fun, too. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the FOW. You never know what's going to happen. Let's go to Andrew in Virginia. Andrew, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. All right. Uh, much. Just got a quick topic for you guys here. I thought it would be a little fun. Uh, what each of you thought was the most embarrassing moment in professional wrestling. Something that's funny. V1? Oh, boy. Yeah, like, like, uh, I was like when the shock, about it. When the, sh when the Shockmaster fell through the wall? <laughs> How about the gobbledygooker? Oh, the gobbledygooker. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> what, what I'd have to say was, uh, the old, uh, Domino's ads for, with Leslie Nielsen in Search of the Undertaker at SummerSlam 94. <laughs> Actually, I thought those were kind of funny, so. <laughs> <laughs> How about anything? Any any time you saw the ding dongs on T on TBS, <laughs> that was that was pretty bad. When Undertaker went through at that Providence um, Royal Rumble, when Undertaker went, you know, like to heaven. When he went to heaven. Yeah. Oh, when he was doing the Michael Jackson scene there. <laughs> yeah. How about when uh, Giant fell off the building? Oh, oh that was good. Trucks. You know, oh, that was right awesome. Knobs, he's still falling. Cave, like 20 miles. <laughs> it was, he's that, like, like 20 miles point. away, yes. He not only fell off the building, he landed in a lake 20 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> he was able to come to the main event soaking wet. <laughs> well, that's just the same as uh, Austin dropping Triple H in the car and then coming back two weeks later without a scratch on him. Well, the thing is, how about the net when uh, Stephanie said, you know, Oh my God! And he only suffered some minor injuries. <laughs> some minor injuries. Oh, it was a miracle. Uh, it'll be How about that night when they embalmed Steve Austin? That was really bad. <laughs> oh, and the and the cameraman was there. So, <laughs> yeah. Anytime the ult anytime when the Ultimate Retor Warrior returned to WCW when the smoke and then all of a sudden he appeared and disappeared. Well, that was yeah. that was bad. Wasn't there a story behind that where the Warrior puked under the ring or something? I heard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Kurt Hennig. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kurt Hennig relieved himself under the ring, and oh. and, and, and under and, and they, I think Norton and then Warrior were underneath the ring, and it was a, it was really horrible to be them. <laughs> uh, another quick thing before I go, guys. Uh, am I the only one who notices that uh, the Rock is turning white? Wow, turning I, white. I don't know about that one. Uh, has anybody? What are they talking about, man? Like Michael <laughs> Jackson? Yes. You yeah. take a look at the old tapes. And you see what dark complexion he has. And now I was watching that No Way Out. I don't know. Maybe it was your TV set. He's always had a fair complexion. He's the same color as Kurt Angle. He's always had a fair complexion. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he just had his hand. You know, yeah, maybe he, had now it's the he doesn't have a tan now, and Angle does. You know, he's the busiest guy in sports <laughs> well, entertainment. He doesn't have a lot of time to sit in the sun. Well, he doesn't have free time, and Kurt, Kurt Angle's in that tanning bed all the time. So. <laughs> now, I don't think anyone beats the tan that uh, Triple H had a couple months ago. I remember Hogan in the in the early '80s, which is probably what he looks like he does now. <laughs> you know, one thing when you get when you get when you get older, you realize you really didn't want to have really good tan when you were younger. <laughs> you learn from your experience. At least keep that towel over your face. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thank you. Very welcome. Uh, let's go to Mike. Mike, what's going on? Hey guys, great show. Thank you. Dave, Brian, Jim, you guys are doing an awesome job. Thanks. And Thank uh, I haven't, I've never read your column, Jim, because I live out here in California, but uh, I'd love to get a copy of it. You know what? You can actually, if you uh, uh, go on the Miami Herald website yeah. and click on sports, and then there's a page on wrestling that I run, and I usually throw it on there. Or you can, I, actually, you can go to that, or you can do WrestleLine. Okay. Their website uh, usually runs it every week, too, so if cool. you want to check it out, thank you. Yeah. 
Hey, um, I had a couple of thoughts about the whole. I know the, the Lawler story is kind of running the the gambit of the uh, the, sh- the topic today. Big story. But um, an I had some. <laughs> <laughs> had some uh, those ideas, ratings. <laughs> had a few ideas um, that haven't been mentioned yet. Uh, Randy Savage, possibly. We talked about that. I think that'd be a bad idea. Shawn Michaels. Oh, that's a real bad idea. We talked about this before. Al <laughs> Snow. Uh, maybe Kevin Nash. Who knows? Oh God. And what's up with a ballet that came in with Ty and Ty the other night? Wasn't she Taka's Taka's sister a few years ago? The the girl? I think yeah. Taka's wasn't that Taka's girlfriend? <laughs> Taka's sister? No, no, really. I think Taka's sister was not that girl. The Taka's oh. sister was a was a lot younger than that. Oh, okay. So she was a little skinnier girl. too, unless she uh, unless she. Uh, yes, yeah, she to was a lot skinnier. She she and was, um, I think that that's Taka's girlfriend for real. From, oh, really? From uh, Japan, yeah. Yeah, because right uh, he was traveling with his girlfriend. And they already blew her off by, um, on the SmackDown show, They she wasn't evil enough or something, but she's gone. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't justify have, getting rid of Lawler's lady and then keeping her. Exactly. That's what my, my next point was going to be. <laughs> but um, uh, also, as far as uh, a few other things, uh, this whole the whole angle with Nash losing on... Uh, on the last WCW pay-per-view and losing his career and all that. Now, I know he he wanted out of his WCW contract and all that. And do you know was he released? No, he's not released. And you know what? <laughs> Kevin Nash is, is very clever. And, yeah. and you know you know I'll, I'll say this now just just to get it out of my get it off my chest. <laughs> when we say like Kevin Nash or Hogan or or Helmsley are very smart, well, it is there there are snide there is a snide aspect to it. But it's not a knock. It is no. because they're smart. They're oh, very yeah. smart when it comes to business. And yeah. Kevin Nash is very smart when it comes to business and very manipulative. I don't believe that, Ke- you know, now maybe now. Now, maybe now Kevin Nash really may want to go to WWF just because WCW is crumbling. But, you know, all that time when Kevin Nash was talking about, like, I want to get out of here and all this, he would privately tell his friends. You know, it's like he was working 100 days a year and making $1.6 million a year. And, you know, his, he could go to the other place and work 200 days a year and make, you know, half that. And yeah. so, you know, he's not a dumb guy, but he would throw that out there and to scare people, oh, I'm ready to jump. It was all leverage. Now, now, you know, now, you know, if he can't get this kind of a deal and stay with WCW, of course he would want to go to WWE. But this is all an angle, and he's, um, you know, he's going to come back when uh, they want to bring him back, whatever, yeah. wherever, however this angle plays out. Most of these, come on, most of these guys, I mean, people, I guess, know this behind the scenes or whatever. And business all together. It doesn't matter if you're in wrestling or not. You're going you're gonna to go the best deal you're going to get. Yeah. I and mean, that's yeah. what happens a lot of times. So yeah. he is, you're right about him being smart with leverage. So we'll see yeah. what happens. On the uh, video game note, I'm a huge fan of import wrestling games. Oh, and boy. there's a brand new one that just came out. It's called Fire Pro Wrestling for Dreamcast. The series has been uh, very popular on some other platforms. Um, and it's a really hot game. It's probably the most detailed wrestling game I've ever played. Uh, it's a 2D format. It's not the 3D format that they're all using these days. A little like WrestleFest, but it's pretty cool. Okay. Don't know if uh, any of you guys play, play any of those games or not. I don't. So <laughs> don't I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the Japanese yeah, got a either. corner of the market uh, compared to the games we have up here. Thanks a lot, guys. You're doing great. Thank okay, you. Very well. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see a couple of emails before we hit this break. Who was the top draw in the WWF during the 1990s? Steve Austin. The top, the top draw. Five dr- top draw. Oh, without a doubt. Shawn Michaels? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 in the 90s? It has to be Steve Austin. No one's even Steve close. Austin? Wow. Yeah, no one's even close. Because who's the top five? Let me look at that. What is it? Top five? Rock. Undertaker? Uh, Undertaker was never a huge draw, but he was around the whole ten years. That's kind of a hard mm. one. Um, I mean, Austin by far. Nobody's close. Uh, Would Michaels was, be in there or no? Yeah, he'd probably be in the top five. Um... Rock was really became a draw in 2000 huh. or, or, or late 99. I think that I wouldn't put him in there. Probably Hogan. Hogan. You know, because you had that middle period where nobody drew. Because mm-hmm. their, right. their business was bad. Yeah. So, what about so, Brett? Uh, Brett and Sean are pretty close. I think they would probably both crack the top five. So you'd have Hogan, Brett, Sean. When was would Warrior be in there or no? Man, no, more not really. Before what about that? Papa Sean go? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next guess. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Macho Man or no? Not by then. Not, Not by, by then. then. Hmm. Um, I mean, maybe the first year, you know, like, 90, 91. But that would be it. Warrior, I mean, Warrior was still on top 
Let's see, he left in 92. What about Vince? Uh, wasn't, was it 99? 90, no, it was 98. 98? Wow. Rate, TV ratings draw, not box office draw, because Vince never went on the road. Yeah, that's TV true. ratings draw, absolutely. Anyway, well. I think we got a bunch. Okay, I was a big fan of Rick Rude, and I was wondering if you ever considered him a world champion. I, I never worried about semantics. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. What about well. Mick Foley? Rick Rude, if David Arquette could be champion, yeah, yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Mick, Mick, Foley is, Mick Foley, I'd say, probably may squeak in around number five. Yeah. Just for, just for the stuff at the end. Yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, as far as Rick Rude, he, he held that internet, WCW International title, which they called the, the world title, except it wasn't recognized because the NWA board wouldn't approve of the title change that WCW wanted. <laughs> you know, it's, it, to me, you know, it's like this. I don't know. I don't know if I consider him a world champ or not. I don't know. Can you explain the history of the WCW International title? <laughs> yes, really um, the the uh, it started as the the NWA World Title when they re resurrected it after they had dropped it for a while. They brought it back. Um, Ric Flair was the champion, and he was supposed to lose it to Rick Rude. And the NWA board uh, and WCW were having problems then, and it led to their, I believe, their final split. Um, it was the Chono thing later. I'm trying to remember. This was this would. God, I don't remember this anymore. It's the whole. I don't remember the whole history of this. Okay, someone's gonna have the, the wrestling history's book in front of them. So look it up. But but um. Okay, because they did the the NWA stopped recognizing the title when they had the fallout, and that was right before Flair was gonna lose it to Rude. So when Rude won it, it became the World Championship Wrestling International World Heavyweight Championship. As opposed to the World Championship Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship, uh, um, and then Rude had it, and then those titles ended up being unified when, I believe, when Hogan was it? No, Flair beat Sting to unify the two belts, and then Hogan beat Flair right away, as usual. So that's kind of what happened there. Huh. 